And it was so fantastic to be a part of this. And, and I'll tell you about a fan letter that I got that was amazing, but um, Entertainment Tonight interviewed me and said, you know, how do you feel about the disclaimers? Because we would just like touch hands and parental advisory, you know, because that was just uh, women touching, gross. Um, and I said, oh my God, I, I'm so behind Ellen on this. And I think that whole thing is ridiculous. But the president of ABC called me directly and said, do you like your job? I said, I love my job. And he said, then shut up. Let Ellen fight that fight. You shut oh, wow. up. Yeah, which is fascinating to me. Hey guys, Brent Harvey here. And this week's Empower Yourself Sustaining Actor chat. Um, I bring in a friend of mine and very successful uh, actress, uh, actor, uh, Lisa Dar. She's been working for over 30 years in the industry. She's had a lot of success, worked with some amazing people. Um, and we talked, we talked about a lot of stuff for how she got started in acting, uh, the difference between single cam, multi-cam, how she handled success and being in the spotlight and just a bunch of fun stuff. So uh, I thought it was a great uh, talk to have and um, a lot of great information. So check it out. Uh, if you have any questions after this, you know, or uh, thoughts, shoot it over to actorshole at gmail.com. And um, if there's anybody you'd love to share this with that could use it, use the information, please do, because that's the purpose of this is to help everybody. Yep everybody in our community um just uh grow and succeed and uh navigate their journey so enjoy you ready to get started i sure am cool uh cool well lisa dar uh yeah. wel welcome <laughs> to the uh empower your self-sustaining hour uh weekly zoom call where we talk about all things about our industry the the craft the industry you know, whatever happens to come up, uh, and I'm sure with you, some good old stories about your journey, uh, because you, I mean, you not, you know, you've been doing it, you've been doing it a long time and not to say you're old, but like you've, uh, you've got a, you've got a lot of great credits under your belt. You've worked with a lot of, uh, talented people as well as you being talented yourself. Um, and I want to, I want to talk about all that. Um, what I want to start with today is sure. what because you're from you're from chicago correct I, yeah i'm from indianapolis so i'm like i was three hours i grew up three hours south of you midwest, um, midwest. <laughs> but like chicago, chicago and indianapolis even though it's like driving from los angeles to san diego it's yes it's so it's so different you know yes very um much. it's yeah. it's like there's a lot of cornfields in between but <laughs> yeah um but so you you grew up in Chicago. Yeah. Well, the suburbs, but yes. Right. But that's like you were born and raised there. So yeah. what got so what got you into acting? Like what inspired you and what was the start of your journey into this crazy career industry? You know what? That's that is a great question. And I, this is gonna sound so cheesy, but it's true that I, it's something that I just was in me. But I, I guess I should say my mother was a Broadway actress. So oh, wow. I, I had it in the blood and my father was a trial attorney. So that's as good as an actor as you can get. Yeah, you're so, performing. Show, showmanship yeah. all around. Um, and I just always wanted to do it. But for some reason, also, I was always just fascinated with TV. I just love TV. Yeah. Um, and you know, my first professional job, I think I was six and I was a chipmunk. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Like, you mean the professional witch in wardrobe. In, you were paid? Yeah, well, no. or just like you, you it, it was, was a, it was truth a job. That, yeah, yeah, I, I think you. the owner got paid. <laughs> I don't think we, in fact, I know we didn't, but I don't know. Yeah. I just always loved it. And, and, showing off I suppose you know but then just this the study of it and and um 
I'm going to segue for a second. I'm so sorry and go off on a bit of a tangent that sure. I, I just love Shakespeare and plays and the classics and but you know that that was always just wonderful and and uh, literature and reading and it's all fascinating to me um but I oh you know what I think too there was and still is great appeal to me of being someone else for a while there's something very appealing about that yeah. um and uh you know and uh, yeah so does that that's cool of that? okay yeah no so let me ask you this because mm -hmm. like chicago you know, it's like the big city of the midwest um yeah. did you you say your mom was um was a broadway so did yeah. she like broadway like new york uh-huh wow was yeah. she was she successful you know, for a long time, she was I'm never not huge or anything. But um, as you all know, when you read a play from Samuel French, they list the first cast that ever mm -hmm. performed the play. She's in a, a one of those. Which oh, is wow. Great. Yeah. So her name will forever be. That's really, awesome. Yeah, I know. It's great. Yeah. And, but it's funny because I didn't. She gave it up willingly and and was kind of at the top of her game met my father and very happily gave it up came back to it much later in, in her life but um she wanted a family and children and so i didn't it's not as if she ever pushed me into it or encouraged me in fact i think she probably discouraged me or so what happened so that's that's my that was going to be my follow-up question like yeah. did did she when you decided to did she encourage did she support did she suppress and no, same well, same thing same thing with your father how was like how was that well, my father god rest him very <laughs> yeah, i know that's it, you it, always know something good's coming when you hear god bless him. God, <laughs> you know? oh, god, oh god bless his soul yeah um yeah german taurus lawyer you can't say asshole one more time about my father it was, and i'm two of those so i can say that was he was he first gen um immigrant? yes oh yes. wow so i'm guessing he came over i'm sorry his parents were and he was yes he was first born here and, and, oh gotcha yeah wow but um yeah and he surprisingly didn't ever discourage it but at the same time, it was a given that I would go to college and that I would I could have studied anything I wanted to. I came away with a degree in biology um, and I know and <laughs> which has really helped me play doctors on TV. So has, I, has, has it really? <laughs> well, no, not really, you being sarcastic. Yeah, that, that I understand at least, you know, yeah. a lot of what, to what you're talking about. But um, no, they surprisingly, you know, I think my mother, if she were to discourage me, it would have been by way of saying it's tough. This is a tough, yeah. hard, awful thing you're doing. It, it was she was never like a show business mom and, yeah. you know, put little need to yeah because there's 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 two ends of that spectrum one yeah. is the full suppression which is like what i what happened to me which is oh, like really? oh yeah it was you know and you know i've i've reconciled with this with my with you know it's it was more so my dad and he was like you know he's like that's that's not a that's not a hobby that's or a, that's not a job it's a hobby yeah, and yeah, you can't make yeah. money and yeah. then the other in the spectrum is the full on stage mom yeah. who, who who then like tries to fulfill their dreams. The, through, right. Right. And so yeah. and then it's and, and I've like looked at this of like there really is a, a a middle ground of and I well and like you said to me, it's the whole thing of like your mom going, well, this is a tough job. And I've heard other successful uh, or I mean, at all levels, but even, you know, the people who get interviewed are usually the more successful ones talk about yeah. their kids. And they're like, 
you know, if your kid wants to be an actor, what are you going to tell That's oh, hard. And it's like, to me and understanding now what language and everything is, and I've been practicing this with my nieces, which is like not to say it's hard because then you make that the, you shift their perspective of anticipation mm. it being hard. Yeah. But going, look, you have to put work in yeah. and let me, you know, I, I may not know how to do it or maybe I do because it is my field, depending on the topic, but it's like you got to put the work in and. I'll help you figure out how to do that. If that's really what you want to do. Like even my niece, my niece this week called me and she's, uh, she's seven and she calls me up uh, to, she's doing a fundraiser for school. And she's like sitting there with my sister and she's like, what am I calling about? And you hear my sister, she's <laughs> like for this. And she has to keep, so I said, hang on a second, grab a piece of paper. She grabs a piece of paper. Pen. I said, all right, what are, what do you ask me for? And we literally go through all the points and I make uh -huh. her write them out. I said, uh -huh. all right, now, now, now act like, and basically I, I directed her. I said, all right, you're going to, we're going to pretend that you're calling me for the first time. And I walked her through this process of going hot hey i'm calling you to ask you to donate money for da, 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 da. um but i i feel myself going you know wanting to to do that default which is the way i was raised and my parents were raised which is like hey you can't just you know like that disciplinary of you know you can't just expect things to fall in your lap because i've seen a lot of people in life you know things just fell in their lap because their, sure. their, their belief is it's, it's supposed to fall. But so I don't, I don't try to say that. So anybody that's listening, that's wanting to get into this industry, it's not hard. There is like, I'd like to say it's, it, it, there are challenges. Yeah. But if you step, if you approach it from the perspective and I'm working on doing this myself because I came from the perspective of it is hard so yeah. it's been a hard journey for me, yeah. but if you can come from the perspective of it's, there's challenges, but if, if it's really your passion, it's what you, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a challenge, but it's, it's explorative. It's fun. Yeah. And there's a lot of rewards. It's and to me, like the, the reason it gets so hard is we, we, we put so much uh, emphasis on the end result or like we approach like we approach it like i see a lot of people doing it because they want to be famous yeah and, right. and, which there's nothing wrong with wanting to be famous but if you want to be famous because you feel like that's going to fill a void of not yeah. being seen in your life or i want to make a lot of money because i don't want to be broke as opposed to i want to experience this it would be cool to be a movie star or it would be cool to have my own series or it would be yeah. cool to have this just for for the experience if you stay in that place i've realized those challenges that come along are much more like a speed bump than they are like climbing a mountain type thing so that's that is a lovely perspective and i Thank you. I really appreciate that. And it, it, yeah, to change the word hard, to just simply challenge. Yeah. And challenges are hard, but right. with a less pejorative feeling to it. Well, it, it, and it, I'm going to say this and we'll move on, but it's like I had this epiphany a couple of weeks ago because I've, you know, I heard this growing up and I've, heard, you know, I've said it myself and, you know, heard other people say it throughout life. And you go, life is hard. And I started <laughs> and I started thinking about it. I'm like, you know, life actually isn't hard. We don't have to, we're not we're not responsible for making sure the sun stays lit. We're not responsible <laughs> for making the trees grow. We're not yeah. responsible for making the trees turn our carbon dioxide into oxygen. Like if we if we just if we sat still, life would ha happen. Yeah. What makes it feel hard is our expectations and uh, us wanting to control it. And that's yeah. why life feels hard. Life is, imagine if we as a human race were responsible for maintaining the planet, like every aspect, or even the, you know, even like I go to the beach and people are throwing trash every place, right? <laughs> it's like, so it's, it's, it, life actually isn't hard. It's, it, life just is, is just naturally happens. Yeah. It's our expectations or like yeah. the, this guy, Kyle Cease, I listened to, 
he says like one thing I love he says is no but what if what if you looked at it from nobody ever broke your heart they broke your expectations Ooh, wow and so like that was part of that Our epiphany is like life actually isn't hard it's my expectation of what life should be or what I should be getting out of it and yeah. when I don't get it I go oh it's hard I can't achieve this I can't have that or because in all reality people say well the acting industry is hard it's like well so is being a submariner or you know <laughs> a, a yeah. biologist or any like anything yeah. like it it's i mean even being a manager of a mcdonald's or yeah. something is not like nothing's easy yeah if it's not like everything's hard if it's not your passion or you're not you're you're doing it for the wrong reasons it's, that's perfect that's a perfect way to look at it you're right yes if for and certainly not to denigrate it in any way but yes for me yeah. working at mcdonald's that that would be hard oh it'd be it'd it be like would, pulling teeth for me yeah, right or yeah but, but you're right you're right acting is acting is not hard yeah you're right the, just the expectations and the perspective I guess. well I, I, I yeah and i don't know about you but like make me sit down and and like do spreadsheets oh which, god which i can do but like uh, it it's yeah it's like drag me behind a truck <laughs> but I, I could be on set for 16 hours and right. and not no. eat or use no. the bathroom or anything. And I'm just Nothing. so, yeah. And I'm yep. just, and I don't want to leave. So you're right. You're right. Um, yeah. I guess what, um, and you know, I'm trying to reframe this. I'm, I, what a great perspective. Um, you know, I think for my mom, when she said it's hard, I think probably what she meant was all the attendant stuff is in fact for me hard. The rejection, the bullying and all that. That is that is hard. And I was saying, yeah, sorry, go, go ahead. No, no. I was just I was actually because I've had a really rough week myself, which uh, is all it's all been it's all mental stuff. It's yeah, you know, no, but, uh, right. but you know, which is still valid, but um, but I was thinking like, you know our in our industry and like we're basically interviewing all the time you know and being rejected is like it it does take a certain type person to like i i don't i don't know many other people outside of our our industry that's had their heart broken as many times as i have in my lifetime already yes. of, you know i get attached to character i get excited about this and it's always no no you're not right for it or you're not good right. enough or whatever it is like right. I, we, I we chose a career where you like you get your heart broken a lot because yeah. it's it's we're passionate about it and there's so many factors so it, it does it does take a it does take a strong soul in that sense but that doesn't mean if if like you you can't handle rejection doesn't mean you shouldn't pursue it because over time you build you build that you know you build I was that gonna say and... that that yeah, that it, the longer, if you're able to stick around and stick with it, 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 that, and I think I said it last week, but sometimes it's you, sometimes it's me, Yeah, you know, and it's not, it's not because it's not me. It's because it is you, if that makes sense. They, yeah. They're not necessarily rejecting me. They're accepting you. Interesting. You know? Yeah. That's a, that's a good um, way to look at it. And I remember, and I'm sorry, I'm sure your your people are uh, a lot younger, but there was a, an actor named of Claude Akins, and my mom went to school with him, and he came over one day, very incredibly successful guy and life lifelong actor, and he sat at my kitchen table and he said, "I don't know where my next job is coming from." Yeah, Claude Akins. Well. You yeah. know, and everyone else is going who what but anyway. well, no, yeah no it's i mean that's like that's like a tom cruise yeah which you know and and i i try to tell my students that all the time is like you know what you take a tom cruise you take a brad pitt you take you know uh jennifer lawrence you take anybody who's at the top and they're all we're all in the same position that there is a there is a small group of people that are in that 15 minute window that they're the it thing right now right and every 
op, all the great opportunities are coming to them because they're the new it thing. Yep. But as soon as that wears out, mm -hmm. we're all in the same boat of we're all freelance, you know, self so, sole con, uh, contractors, which is like, if I stop, if I stop going out, look, getting, looking for getting the work, whatever that looks like, like, it's not, it's not a corporate job. I mean, you might get a series, which is great, which if it is successful, you know, but you're still going, okay, I, I know I got it for the next six months, but after that, if they don't, don't renew us or, you know, whatever happens, um, you know, then we're in the same boat. So yep. that's why if you like Tom Cruise has been the biggest movie star since 86, yeah, the reason like he had that window where he was like all but now like for the past 20 years or actually no. 1996, so he was a little over he's about 12, 12, 13 years into it at that time, he went and basically negotiated and produced mission Imp the first mission impossible. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from then on he has been he has been the driving force behind his career in the sense of going out and and producing and and pushing forward and if you listen to him talk um he even says like his friends all told him he was crazy to 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 turn the mission impossible television show into a friend uh, a movie and told him not yeah. to do it and like and you see how he keeps up in the stakes with the stunts and everything else and he yep. just and what we saw with Top Gun 2. And um, like he, he, even though he's in the position he's in, he still has a lot of resistance from people around him in the world. And he has to constantly push and fight for that. Otherwise, if he, if he just relied on things coming to him, mm -hmm. would, we'd be like, whatever happened to Tom Cruise? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. He has kept yeah. himself. He has kept him. And that's why they say like, it's hard getting to the top of the mountain, but it's even harder to stay on top of it type thing. So, right. uh, and that's, that's hard to, to understand until you've witnessed or experienced that in some form or fashion. <clears throat> Let me ask you a, a, a tangent question here. It, it went, and yes, he does his own stunts. And that means some things, certainly you, you understand what those stunts mean more than I do. Yeah. Um, it, does that mean anything to the public, really? Well, Ooh, he did his own stunts, but it, does it, does the public it, understand what that means? Well, I mean, just like a magic trick, you don't when when you know it's just like anything else. We you know is that um, if it like it's funny is like if if something if something looks easy and you mm -hmm. go. I could do that. Ah. You don't understand the hours that were put into making it look effortless, right? right. Whether it's yeah. a mat, whether it's a magic trick, whether it's a great script, a great movie, or something like that. You watch, you watch like a Die Hard or something like that, and you're like, I could do that because it's <clears throat> so seamless and it just flows. Yeah. yeah. Right. But it's like, okay, now face the blank page, and so the general population outside of our industry i don't think they appreciate i don't think so either. what what uh, an actor doing their own stunt takes yeah. and not only that the risk because like no. you know <laughs> tom broke his ankle in one of the movies and they shut down for 3 months yeah. um harrison ford ripped his shoulder in the latest indiana jones like uh, you know, pe you know, some, ha you know, people have died and uh, things like that. And, um, and, and, but, but just, but, but the experience, and again, going back to Top Gun 2, seeing the actors in the airplane, everything's happening, you're sitting in the cockpit with them, and you see the G-force on their face. Yeah, that's why it became the biggest <clears throat> movie of the year and one of the top of all time. Mm -hmm. um be, and and people went and saw it like that was the first movie i've seen twice in a movie theater since the first mission impossible so mm -hmm. um and people were running back to see it like titanic and things like that you know because J james cameron changed the game with build li literally building the ship in that big tank you know yeah. um yeah. 
there there's and, and you're starting to see and i think top gun 2 was a perfect example of bringing the practical back because we've gone so cg yeah bring practical back because it's a different experience now do people appreciate that unless they're in our industry and know what that takes no but then again i you know the, i'll tell you a game changer for our industry was john yeah. wick ah uh, mm -hmm. because what 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 they did was they took the actor and normally in a in, in an action movie you see these very tight shots and these quick cuts where it moves all around to feel like an intense you know and the actor yeah. can get away with just doing this and yeah and and it sells but then you take an actor and do these really long takes in these wider shots and you see and you can see keanu reeves and this is not a knock on him but you can see him in the first one and the most recent, which I think was three or four. I can't remember what we're on now. Yeah, but you can see the difference of him slowing down and his body. He just can't do because his age. Yeah. But yet he's still doing it. And you're sitting there and I'm just like, man, that's exhausting. But he's doing yeah. it take after take after take. So it it brings it brings a whole different. It's just it's like it's the difference of like to me would be like the difference of growing up in the silent film area era and then them going hey we got sound now and people going does that really add to it and it's like <laughs> right, but if no, you, right. you know and we're so used to sound now but if you go back and and watch a silent film there's a whole different feel to it and and there's something special about that so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't know if that really answers your question but yeah, well it does it, and um I'm thinking about, I did uh, an episode of uh, Quantum Leap, and it was in Egypt. Which One of my favorite was, shows. Oh, I and love by that the show. way, Scott Bakula, Great I guy. want to tell you a story about him. He's beyond fantastic. But yeah, so it took place in Egypt by way of Simi Valley. And, <laughs> I know. Yeah. and I was supposed to... It was a curse, a mummy curse, the whole thing. And I was supposed to pick up a basket and underneath was a cobra that was supposed to rear its head and, you know, bleh. and um, the director said, the <laughs> said, oh, Lisa, you can do that. We'll get the shot with you. And thank God for the animal guy. He said, absolutely not. Yeah. No. No, no, oh, with no. A, with a live cobra? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. And yeah. in fact, everybody had to sign it two days before we shot. It had to sign a waiver. I don't remember what. Yes, a waiver. And there was an ambulance on the set. And I remember asking the the uh, animal wrangler, I said, but you milked them. Like, what? You have to a half an hour right. before. He goes, if he bites you, you're going to die. <laughs> no matter you know not that i'm not that hour. method <laughs> yeah but and thank god for that but a lot of times i'm taking us in a different direction but directors will ask you to do something that and we talked about this last week will ask you to do things and the actors always like yeah i'll do that i can do that yeah thank, again thank god for this guy saying no no well yeah absolutely and i've been in that position I put myself in that. So there's a difference between a Tom Cruise going, I'm, I want to put myself in this position and challenge myself, <laughs> which by the way, he puts painstaking hours into training before he, he doesn't just go, ah, let's do this. Cause you know, right, so he, right. he, he also respects the danger and like pe people might think that he's just like, well, stick me outside of a plane. Like he, he does all the check marks that he can to ensure uh so that's different than than a director coming to an actor going hey i want to you know put you right. in this situation i was right. and, and again and this is that this is a very important thing to talk about because young, younger actors and again uh younger i mean somebody just starting out no matter your right. age what it's just your, your experience right. but right. i like i've done a lot of stupid shit that i look back and i go i i I thought I was being a team player. <laughs> and this is what I told you about the time that we were on set and a guy brought a gun on set, his own gun <gasps> on set without going through the channels and I shut down production. Yes. Um, and I got criticized for that until <laughs> this year with Alec Baldwin happened and people were uh -huh. like, thank you for being uh -huh. that guy. But um, uh -huh. 
I did a short film when I was, I was living in DC for a short period. I did a short student film and it was about, it was, it was ridiculous. Anyways, a guy meets this girl, they go home, they hit it off. They end up sleeping together and everything. But what you, the, the end reveal is that he, she had just escaped a mental institution and that's and and right after is when he ran into her and they start, but in one of the scenes, like it's the murder scene and uh -huh. she's like, he wakes up and she, it's kind of like that uh, good fellas scene where she's on top, he wakes up and she's got the gun in his face <laughs> sitting on top of him. But it was like that, except for she had a knife and then she starts stabbing. Well, in one of the shots, we literally had a real knife uh -huh. and, she, and she put it up to my throat and then she stabbed and she stabbed <laughs> To next to me and the cameras on this side to look like and yeah. i and like i look back at that and i was like all that took was one little slip right. right right and it's like but at the time i was like i love acting and i, I and so you know it's 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 okay to say no and i'll tell you in another experience i i had a, a student this is when i was in florida I had a friend, student, she's very attractive, uh, young, very attractive, and she uh, was offered a role in a, in a short film, or no, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, indie film, whatever it was, and mm -hmm. it was like a post-apocalyptic, da, da 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 very, you know, whatever, so she she brings me, that she goes, will you look at the script and tell me what you think, and I start reading it, and in, in this scene, she like, she's like this uh laura croft tomb raider type character badass mm -hmm. and everything and she was all about that but they they go back and they get back to the lab and they're just talking and then all of a sudden it turns into a sex scene and the the guy the the main lead guy and her having sex and like i was reading it, i was just like hang on a second i was like that doesn't justify the story at all like i'm not against nudity but yeah. just like anything it, it has to, no matter, and I tell my students this, whether it's a gun, whether it's a joke, whether it's, a, it's nudity, whatever it is, it has to move the story forward. Yes. It has to, it has to tell more of the story. I was watching, I was watching an ep, the pilot of, uh, of uh, Californication. Mm. And he's, ha he's having, he has sex with a couple women in the pilot and mm -hmm. each one of them it tells you about who he it's not you know they could have probably covered the women's breasts or whatever but like cutting out those scenes of how mm -hmm. he treats women during yeah. and after sex yeah. you would lose who he part of who he is as a character which was right. very important so Good those point. are actually very important and not just yeah. gratuitous so anyways i go back to her and i was like go back to him and tell him that this isn't justified right and she's like, oh, I really want to do this for all. I was like, go back and tell him that <laughs> yeah. this. And she goes back and she goes, this isn't just a, like, this is like, why am I having sex? It doesn't, it doesn't support the story. Well, they weren't expecting an educated response from a, a good looking woman. And they're like, okay, well, what if she's just in her bra and panties? And she comes back and tells me that. I was like, well, then I'd, I'd ask him, what, how does that support the story? And by the end of it, they scrapped the whole scene because they could not justify to her the uh, scene uh -huh. and, and you know thank god she came to me and asked me because if she'd just been like well i just i want to be a, like i want to i want to work and just like me put the knife to my throat and stuff like that it's you whether it's 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 a knife or whether it's nudity things like that you have to think through it of that if 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 they're they ask you to do something number one that they're not willing to do themselves <laughs> like I, I will never, I will never ask someone to do something I'm not willing to do myself. Mm -hmm. And number two, if they, if it doesn't justify the story, and it, if, if they can't clearly explain how it supports the story, the character arc, whatever it is. Yeah. And three, if you challenge it and they, they threaten to let you go. Bye bye. Move, move on to another. There's other projects and, bye bye. you know, another thing. And um, it's just, it's, 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 I looking back, it's never been worth it. And every time that I've held the line, um, everybody's been respectful of that. And, and if anything, they've been like, oh, I never, never thought of it like that and whatever. But I know a lot of people who have done it because out of fear and they don't want to be, 
they don't want to be deemed the, the, but difficult, you, the difficult you actor. said it i want to be a team player i want Blair. to be, yeah but um let me go back a sec to the to tom cruise and he's yay he does his own stunts but now i'm gonna throw in and i forget the name of the movie but julianne moore did a scene this very emotional scene bottomless do you remember this movie it was a long time ago but so and she obviously is a real redhead by the way um, yeah no but but why and it's like the, the scene then to to me became about oh her look at how her, her brave book. the actress is doing is and, being, you know look at, and so it, and it so becomes very distracting and and for when you talk about tom cruise doing his own stunts isn't that in itself sort of a stunt of oh absolutely like he yeah. like you know absolutely but here's the difference and you know and you can feel his passion and that yeah. he feels in alignment with it yeah that he's like i'm gonna hang myself out of a plane and you might you could and it absolutely is like he's trying to he's trying to get people to come back to the movie theater like mm -hmm. if you listen to his talk at con this cons this year can can con uh this year, <laughs> yeah. what they, it's a real it's the best interview i've ever seen him do simply because they don't talk about him being a movie star but they actually talk about his love of cinema and why he does what he does um and he says that he's like i make big movies for for the movie theater experience yeah. and so he's trying to do a lawrence of a, he's trying to make people feel like he felt watching or his generation felt watching Lawrence of Arabia or something mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of like going and, and, and like a top gun too, where it's like, people are like, I'll watch it when it co comes out. I'm like, you have to see it on the big screen the, to appreciate yeah. what they did. Yeah. yeah. So you may, you may think it's gratuitous, but, and just like the Julianne Moore thing, um, yeah. you know, but, but, but it, but it, it was her choice to do that. Just like it's mm -hmm. his choice. But what we're, but what we're, there's a difference between them going like a Julianne Moore and I've had seen actors do it and I've had actors do it like in class or like I want to I want to get naked in this scene and I'm like why they're like because it scares the shit out of me I'm like yeah okay yeah I was like you know if that's what you want to do because yeah. they they want to they want to overcome or they want to feel like a brave actor um, yeah even though it doesn't support the story but that's yeah. their choice. Yeah. That would be different than me as the teacher or the director coming up going, you know what the scene really needs is for you to get naked. Your boob. Yeah. Right. right? right, right. So, so if you're doing it and it doesn't support the story, but you're doing it because you're like, I want to do it. You know, yeah. there's a, there's a very intense, beautiful film, but it's, it's hard to watch. It's called Irreversible mm. with, um, oh my God. It's a, uh, uh, Cazelle. Um, I'm gonna write this down. Uh, Italian. Uh, he's French. She's Italian. Uh, couple. Uh, uh -huh. Monica Bellucci and her husband at the time, Cazell. Um, yeah. He played the bad guy in uh, Ocean's Eleven or else Ocean's Twelve. Anyway, if you saw him, you know I, I can never remember his first name. Brilliant. Yeah. They're both brilliant actors, but they they play a couple she gets she gets raped and he goes and kills the guy and it's shot in reverse like <gasps> memento was yeah yeah so you it starts with him killing the guy and then works backwards to show why he killed him i like number, that convention by the way yeah <laughs> yeah number one there's a whole scene in their bedroom i think they had just had sex and then they had getting this whole argument but they're both naked you could say it's the actors being brave to me i'm and and to me they are but to me from the artistic i loved it because it's like oh we're actually in somebody what i hate is when yeah you you, you have a set like people finishing up a sex scene and the girl oh, rolls over and she does this and i'm just uh, like no, that no. that takes me out of it because i'm like that's not how somebody who just had coitus would act, but there's people that are very clever in how to how to not show that without it feeling like I'm doing this because I'm in a movie type thing. I was just going to tell that story in that I was in Nip Talk and um, the, the lead guy and I get wicked drunk 
and just have stupid sex. Yeah. And, you know, and they were so lovely and respectful. And they said, so we're going to shoot it this way. And we're going to, and I said, wait a sec. If you don't, if you can't show my boob, fine. But we're drunk and we're fucking. I'm not, I don't want we that. Have to honor, we have to honor, we have to honor the truth. You figured yeah. out that. You figure out how to shoot it. And they were like, and they love that. Yeah. They love that because, yeah, no, I'm not. Yes, you're right. Like, I'm going to get, I know, get out of bed. You see, Ooh, people aren't going to be able to unsee that <laughs> now that I've said that. They, they no, do this. True. They're just it's like, so, what are you, you know. I find that so distracting. Yes. Yeah, so you're right. Just, just the, living the people, in the moment of uh, being true to to the, the scene, to the, again, to the, it doesn't yeah. support the story, and it's like yes. again, her uh, uh, the 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 actor covering up Ugh, her boobs please. in a way that feels like that she doesn't want the guy, the uh, the other person to see her boobs, but really it's the audience. Yes. It's like you you just like you saying the Julianne Moore thing, seeing her bush unexpectedly takes you out of scene. That takes me out of scene because I'm like because as an yes. audience member, we're really we're voyeurs. We're, yeah. we're, look, we're looking through somebody's window of their life and yeah. we want it to feel authentic unless that character is inauthentic, even in the privacy of their own life. Beautifully said. Right. Yeah. So, yes. so, you know, like you look, you look at a, you look at Nick, uh, Jack Nicholson's character and as good as it gets and you see him, how sterile he is in his apartment. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That. Like if it was an if it was a Nicolas Cage character, you'd be like, well, he's doing that because it's a low budget film and and, <laughs> and props department doesn't want to have to reset all the shit. Right. Oh, but God. the Jack Nicholson character, he's OCD. <laughs> and so it supports yeah. his character. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So to, to kind of wrap this this part up is that you have to look at it from that is like, does it honor not does it honor the story, does it honor the character? But also on top of that, you got to be honest and be like am I okay? Does it honor me? Yeah. And is there a creative way to shoot around it without it, without losing the story? Right. Um, and you know, there's, there's, there's so much gratuitous out there, even like, especially in the older movies, especially when women had even less of a voice and things like that, where, you know, uh, but you couldn't, you couldn't make body heat without showing it all yeah 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 right yeah because if, right. if you shied away from that at all you'd be pulled out of the whole story and be like this this is bullshit so if I, if you're stepping into like the a, a film like body heat you got to be the person who's going okay i gotta be i'm i'm willing to put myself if you're not you need to step aside and not to say you're not a team player or right. you're you're not you it's just that's not the role for you and it's, because certain roles do call for that. Yes. And, you know, to honor the story and the characters and 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 in that that uh, that story that the, the voyeur is going through. And that's why going back to Tom Cruise is he's like the only way I would make another Top Gun movie is if we sat in the cockpit and we couldn't do that until technology caught up. Because if you watch the first one, mm -hmm. they cheat everything. They put them in these these false cockpits that are in hydraulics and they do oh. that to match with the pilots. Well, the new one, they're in the plane and you can't wow. fake that. Right. Yeah. And so that's, he was saying the same thing is like, we want to honor. And that's when, when you see the G force and them fighting those G's it. And he told all the actors, if you're doing this film, you're getting in the plane just to let you know. So if you're not okay with that, say no. Yeah. So then yeah. they had a choice and it, they wouldn't be like, you know, it would be unfair if somebody stepped out, it'd be unfair him to go, oh, they're not a team player. You know, it'd be like, look, if they're not comfortable doing that, that's OK, you know, but we don't we don't want to force somebody to do something they're not willing to do. Yeah. But we still have to honor the story. So we need to find the person who falls in alignment with that. So right. anybody listening to this, just make sure like ask those questions does it honor the story does it honor the character's arc and does it honor yourself mm -hmm. and if it if it checks off all those you know but never let somebody bully you coerce you or force you to do something you're not comfortable doing and that doesn't especially if it doesn't support the story or the character 
Yeah. So, yeah. With you that, know, so and, and uh, uh, parenthetically, I was in a, a play and this, there was a woman, oh, this is so long ago. Um, she was a very religious Jewish lady. Great. She wouldn't work Saturdays. Then you know what, sweetheart? We got to get somebody else. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, like, and we're not discriminating against your religion, but no, this Just, this is the this is the job, right? 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 Like this is, and it, that it would it be different if you like if you said, yeah, we work Monday through Fridays, and then she goes, okay, I'll do it, and you're like, well, now we want to add Saturdays, and yeah, and her be like, I don't work Saturdays. Oh, you know what? You're fired. That's you're right. not a team player. Totally you know, different. If they're like, thing. hey. We have performances on Saturday, Sunday, and she's like, yeah. I'm in, and then goes, I don't work Saturdays though. Be yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, how did you break into the industry? Like what Ooh. was your what was your break? Because did you, you know, start I, did you start on stage? Yeah, very much yeah. so. Um, um yeah, doing plays. Like I said, I was a chipmunk at age six and all that. So doing plays and then getting my <clears throat> master's at UCLA and um, they had, I don't know if they do anymore, it's so long ago, but a thing called the O'Brien Awards. Um, and at, at that time, it was kind of a, not a big deal, but um, it was an, an industry kind of thing. And so here I was, did a showcase basically, and a, a guy who had gone to UCLA, a casting director, called me in. Oh man, this is back when I had balls. He so he called me in for to read for the part of some part in Peggy Sue got married, if I remember. The film. And, uh, yeah, yeah, Great and I was, I was still in grad school. And he calls me and he goes, okay, Lisa, so <clears throat> your, your name is Jane and you're 18. I was 24 at the time. You're 18 <laughs> and you're from a small, you're a small town girl. You've never left your small town. I took the sides and I kind of tossed them at him. I said, oh, honey, who are we kidding? And he goes, and he said, uh, do you have an agent? And I said, no. He goes, I'm going to get you an agent. And he did. And I started working immediately. Wow. Yeah. So I was very, very lucky. It was amazing. And by the way, one of the judges was Jimmy Stewart. And he, I know, I know. So I was so lucky wow. to meet I know. And so well, I Harvey. said to him, well, what, what, I said what, what, to what him, are you doing here? Oh, yeah, I know. And I said, you know, most people can go line for line with you on It's a Wonderful Life. And certainly I can, but I can also do Fly to Phoenix. And he went, oh. <laughs> wow. It was, I know. Yeah. That's, I know. that's cool. Wonderful. That's, that, that, I Matt, love that about our industry is like you get to meet people that you've, and it usually happens in the weirdest situations of how it happens. Like how I got to work with Al Pacino was oh. a fluke. And it's like, that's what I love about our industry and living in LA is like the people you come across and get to work with and, you know, things like that. You're like, I grew up or like I watched you or you inspired me. So that's great. That's so cool. You got to meet Jimmy Stewart. You know, and God bless someone like him and Al Pacino for doing something like that. Like Jimmy Stewart wants to go and be a judge at some college yeah. showcase, but he did and he was there and, and lovely. and. God well, to, bless him. I mean, to me, to, yeah, to me, it's like, I mean, if, if you forget, and I think about this all the time when I think about act, hear about actors who are being difficult and like, <laughs> like I'm going to be the last one to show up on set or, you know, nah. all, all this ego stuff. And yep. I'm just like, if I was the director or producer, I'd just walk up to him and be like, remember when you first wanted to do this and like you just did it for like where did that person go yeah. right yeah so so for people that have that success and then still are just like i'm like oh that'd be cool to go judge something like they're still interested in the discovery yes at, at any age and discovery yes. of like well i've never judged a college thing let me go do that thing yeah. or just being humble 
Um, and giving back and being generous. And let me for a second go back to yeah. my love, Scott Pacula. Yeah. Um, we were, whatever the scene was, and they did his close ups and they were going to turn around on me. And um, they said, Scott, you're done for today. You know, wrap on Scott. And he said, no. It, well, we haven't done Lisa's turnaround and he was going to be off camera. Right. And they said, well, Scott, we're not, we can't, we can't really pay you and just go home. And he said, take me off the clock, but I'm not leaving. Yeah. And he didn't. Good and for he, him. Yes, exactly. Nick. But that also brings me to something that we talked about last week, that, it, that kind of thing it, and the feeling on a set, it comes from the top down. Oh, yeah. You know, and if Scott Bakula is willing to say, take me off the clock, but I'm not leaving, you know, the, the crew is going to be behind him. Everybody's going to be behind him and behind the show. And if he's not complaining, then I better not complain. Yeah, you set the tone. And like Cl Clooney he talks about, and Clooney's a big talks about that. He's like, I know that I'm the guy who sets, the, like there's there's quite a few people who actually acknowledge that now. They're like, I realize the responsibility yeah. that on my shoulders of setting the tone right. and expectations. Like if right. I act a, like if I act a certain way, and just by Scott, Scott Bakula or Al Pacino, Charlie Theron talked about Al Pacino doing that on The Devil's uh, Advocate. Where yeah, he, yeah, was, yeah. he was just in the like after they wrapped it he's basically just in background he's like i'm staying to support her Lovely. Uh, and 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 all the other actors too Lovely. and nick nicholson did it on few good men like Lovely. and he was like i just love to act so yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah that's cool i'll stay and i just you like be in because they realize not just the actors but it's it, it's like if if lisa's working off me all day during my coverage and I leave when they go to her coverage, it's going to feel different because she's not working off yeah. me anymore. It's what she, in, you know, so it's, it, it is. And, and there's a whole, and you earn people's respect and people want to work with you and, 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 and they're willing to go bleed for you then without you even asking them or coercing them. Ask you this. There was, uh, I was on a show that took me four years to die, um, which is, I oh, know it was lovely because I was mostly in a hospital bed. So your like, character took yes, four years I'm to like, die. I got my black, blacking down. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, you'll mention her, Janine Turner. And she had, she was the female lead in, at the time. Um, and she had a hard out at six o'clock, hard out. And so they cover, 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 cover her, six o'clock, boom, in the, practically in the middle of a take, goodbye, she left. So all my coverage was with, and bless them, the script supervisor who's like, so the doctor says you need to, yeah. you know. Um, but, and I'm, I'm torn about this. Personally, I would never do that. But also, in a way, good for her to sticking to. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is the contract I signed. You signed it. I signed it. Let's right. go live up to it. How, where, where do you stand on that? Yeah, no, I think it's, you know, the other thing, and this is something that's actually been sitting with me just in all around life recently, just in, even in the past week and so is, we we also we never know what somebody's going through no correct and right. so if like her priority like if she was a mother was kid no and, her kid. and she's like i want to have dinner with my kids every night yep um and that's why you know yes. but if you but if you go back and look at like uh what was the the show feud it was um betty davis and um oh what's yeah, yeah yeah and Big like they Jane. just hated it yeah, they yeah. just hated each other so much that it was always yeah. like they they would. Is she on set yet? Because I'm going to be the last to show up, and it's just this ego thing. Right. Like that's that's just poison. That's just poison to the whole. That's you know. But what I would say is that, and it's not that you like you have to do this, but to me, 
you know, it's the whole you get more with honey than shit type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If she was to talk to, if she was to inform the person that you worked with, it was to inform the regular cast and crew who works every day and go, hey, look, my heart out's at six and here's why. Yeah. Then you would all support her in that and not take it personal. But if she's just a heart out, you're open to this whole uh, infinite <laughs> of ideas of justifications which again, as individuals, especially as artists, we, we turn into a personal story and go, oh, she's so selfish and I can't believe she won't support me. So what right. I would say is if somebody was to do that, if they were to take the extra step and explain and go, hey, look, it's important to me to be with my kids. And yeah. you know, if I, I don't want, if, if it six o'clock, we're in the middle of a take, I don't, I understand and I, I, I really don't want to do that, but this is my prior priority right now. Yeah. And I'll do everything I can yeah. up until six o'clock. Then people are going to support and acknowledge that and, yeah. and go in because you know their story. But if, if yeah. you're not, um, I think it just it just leaves the door open for animosity and other things that yeah. could just be just by. And I'm learning this more and more in my my life professionally personally and everything else is just commu open communication yeah and just and then people people actually will understand and go all right and not and actually be on your side so yeah. I think it's absolutely that you I'm all about boundaries and mm -hmm. boundaries and, and and knowing your value so you don't get taken advantage of um so I that's what I mean that's what I would say yeah, but you know, um, you remind me of something that I was, I did, and it was only one day, one scene on Dexter, and it was Michael C. Hall. Michael. Michael C. Hall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I always get him the other one confused. Right. So we get in the van to travel to set, and nothing, nothing. Fine. Okay. We do the whole scene. It's probably about you know four or five hours. Get in the van to go back to the base camp, and I a little bit snarky said, "Oh, by the way, I'm Lisa. It's nice to meet you." And he kind of went, "Yeah." Well, a few months later, I found out. It, everyone found out that he had leukemia. Yeah. He was battling leukemia. So just like you say, you don't know what's going on. And at first I was like, what a fucking dick. What a dick. Yeah. Yeah, what a dick. And he can't even be bothered to say hello right. to me. Yeah. But he was going through his own He's stuff. Going through it. It's yeah. it's funny. It's funny you say that because when um Chad, Chadwick Bozeman passed away, yeah. He, he kept his he kept his battle with cancer secret, so secret that like Ryan Coogler who was a close friend of his and directed mm -hmm. in Black Panther, didn't even mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Um, he kept it so secret, but there was, he did a film with Spike Lee called, I think it was called The Five Bloods. And he played a character who had died in Vietnam and the the his four buddies that they, there was a, there were five of them in Vietnam. He died and the other four survived and they go back to Vietnam and he shows up as a, as in, like a ghost and like flashback <gasps> but Oof. when he but when he died one of the actors and i can't remember who it was did an interview and he's like sobbing he's like yeah. when we were shooting that Ugh. after every take he would go and sit in his chair and this chinese guy would come up and put these pins in him and these women started rubbing him and and he wouldn't talk to us and they were like what a fucking dick they're like yeah, so this go. guy's a this guy's a movie star now and you right. know da, da, da. and this guy's sobbing he's like i realize now he was fighting this thing and he was yeah. putting he was doing everything he could just to have energy to do take after take right he's like i feel so guilty for judging him yes it's like i get that chadwick like chose to keep that private yes but i don't know like i mean it's it's easy to say in hindsight but if there was a way for him to communicate with them so like because that's what happens people we spin up these stories yes and it creates as opposed to if he said look i'm going through something right now i don't yeah. care to share specifics yeah but you know i'm going to put everything i when 
take after take, I'm going to give it all, but in between, like you might see this or whatever, uh, they would have been doing everything to support him yeah. through that, even if they yeah. didn't know the specifics. So that's why yeah. I say like the communication um, mm. is so mm -hmm. important because mm -hmm. the like we're brought up generationally, we're brought up to keep everything inside for fear of being judged and right. fun of and all these other things. But what we're starting to realize, I think, as a society, I know I'm starting to realize is the more you share with people, the more people actually rally around you mm -hmm. to support you. And they actually mm -hmm. want you to win. They want you to succeed and they want you these other things. Most people, not everybody, but most yeah. people, they want to support you. But if they don't know, then they're, they're going to take it personally. They're going to whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and only in hindsight can we then look back and go, well, had I known, I would have acted differently. And yeah, so it's, yeah, it's it's you know, it's it's tough. But and, and that's why they say relationships, it, it takes both parties. Mm -hmm. You know, if they went into it just going, well, let's just assume something's going on with him and let's support him. He could just have been a dick. Right. right? <laughs> and yeah. it, and, you know, and, and if so, it's. Yeah, I, I would just say open communication and somebody may still not support, but I, I find most people would go above and beyond to help, especially if they know you're going through some. And, and I yeah. love that now just, you know, globally and in our industry, especially Brad Pitt just came out talking about his out problem, his battle with alcoholism and things like that. We're starting to talk more about um, mental health and mm -hmm. society, but also our industry. And going, you know what, I'm, we just saw, I just saw Justin, not that I follow him, but like I saw a headline, Justin Bieber just canceled his tour, like mid tour ah. to, to focus on his mental health. Mm -hmm. So you're starting to see that more where people are starting to prioritize. And yeah. now in the past, people canceled a tour and they're like, oh, you know, something happened and people get all upset. But now that they're going, I'm canceling for this reason. People yeah. are like they start supporting and sharing and actually become bigger fans yeah. because they're like, you're a real person. Right. We care about you. And I, right. so I would just say no matter what it is, you're, and that's why people were and we're I'm sure we're going to see more of it. Um, suicides as the economy and everything drops, unfortunately. But that's why it's so important that if people are going through a tough time, you actually tell people Um and share that because people actually do, especially if you feel like they're, I know I kind of took a turn here, but I think it's important that, you know, because we go through so much um, as artists and in this industry, we go through so much rejection and it is so superficial at times mm -hmm. that, you know, and I think you said this last week was like taking time out to live life and not just making it all about acting in the industry and stuff. Yeah. Um, is that like you communicate with people and tell them what you're going through without the fear of being judged or criticized. And actually, people actually are going to step up and support you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I think, though, that it's a really fine line in the sense that and bless Brad Pitt. Great and good for you for coming out with that. But then the scrutiny becomes so well, and he's, he's Brad Pitt. If right. Mr. Nobody came out and said, yeah, I'm an alcoholic. The second then you're in public, yeah. and take a drink. Whoa, my God, yeah. that's the biggest deal ever. And now you're unemployable because you're unreliable. You're, yeah. And right. So yeah, it's, it's, well, and again, I'm not saying like you come out and tell the whole world, but I'm saying right. like, if you're on set or, right. Who, oh, Jamie Lynn Siegler, who played Meadow Soprano on The Sopranos. Yes, yes. She, it, she has MS and she, she has a problem like doing like walking, she said in this sure. pot, podcast. And she will Selma literally- Selma Blair too. Selma Blair. Oh, she's, yeah. got, she's got a whole, she's got a different version of it, which is much more intense. Yeah. And she, anyways, but she says, I will go and tell the whole production, hey, mm -hmm. I have MS. It's not going to stop me from working or anything. Yeah. And she's like, but there might be times that I need to take a break or whatever. And know yeah. that if I, if I do that, here's why. And she said, everybody supports her on that because she shares that. But if she kept that inside and then, you know, and so each production she goes yeah. into, she pulls the, 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 the head, the 
the people who need to know and explains to them. So number one, they don't freak out if something happens and go, yeah. Oh, she like, she's going to like, we have to get rid of her because the whole thing, she explains to them the symptoms and, and, yeah. and you know, and her limit or I should say the limitations, but she tells them, Hey, look, if I need to take a break, here's why. And she said, everybody rallies around her. Yes. So, uh, yes. And that's yes. And it I can, it can still, fantastic. it can still be, it can still be private within the production. Absolutely. Right. But I will throw this into it that that is something that um, it's a, it's, you can't control. And yes, I would be personally, I would be very open about that too. And I hear yeah. and what a great way to approach it. But if, for example, I come on, I say, look, you guys, I'm an alcoholic. So <laughs> if I need to go have a drink, you know, then just understand that that's what that is. I mean, there's a whole different stigma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the, the whole the whole thing with Brad Pitt was just saying of how, like, in the past, we've had our movie st celebrities, movie stars, um, music stars, whatever, of like covering that up and not yeah. talking about that and going, yeah. oh, it's 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 exhaustion or whatever. But to see that <laughs> yeah. that that somebody that could easily go, well, this could tarnish my image and everything else. Right. Being willing to be vulnerable like that shows the consciousness shift in the world. I hope that, that's that, true. That we're starting. So no, I'm not saying go on set and go. I'm an alcoholic. So if I disappear for 20 minutes, <laughs> you know, type thing. No, right. Yeah. yeah, I'm. I'm saying there's a different stigma to even still. I think, and you're right. It's changing, and that's fantastic. But mental health issues, yeah. and you know, I think that the stigma is. Oh, just get over it, or right. then just stop drinking. Then just right. stop. That, yeah. that becomes more of a character. Just issue. be happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Billy Bob Thornton talked about that in a in a in an interview, and he's like the they were like the first the first season of Goliath was so good. They're like that felt like the closest to you. He's like, yeah, I was having a really shitty year, and I was just like everything was irritating me. He's like, so I just I said the lines like that. <laughs> and it and it no, fulfilled the character he's like but i also told everybody i was going he's like i was going through it don't take shit personally because you yes. know whatever and he's like yeah. like he's just like i just i was everything was pissing me off i was just irritated so you know but it but it served his character so it's just it's i don't know it's there's not a there's not a perfect answer for every situation so right. i'm sure people right. find some nugget in there but yeah so I want, I want to move on here in real sure. quick. And so since we're talking about like, what, how have you, how have you handled rejection and continued? I know we kind of talked about this last week. I kind of want to, but how did you, how do you handle, how do you handle rejection or how have you handled rejection and like, you know, rallied up to do it again and again to, to like have a career like you, you've had. You know, I, that's a great question. And and but, um, not yes and, and but, um, I, I, like I was saying earlier, I don't look at it as rejection. It's, it's not, not me, it's you, it, that they want you. They want somebody that parted their hair on the other side. They want, but truly, it's so they, ridiculous, you know, but it's true. I know, and and so it's not. There's only so much I can do or be, yeah. and so I don't feel ever personally rejected. Um, mm. For example, I would, oh my god, went through all the hoops and finally went to network on a pilot, and it was freaking magic between me and Kevin Pollock. It, fantastic, and it would have nice. great guy. Yeah, well, we had never stood up next to each other. So uh, we- You're we taller finished, than him. <laughs> whoa, whoa. We finished the scene and uh, the network, the network no. applauded, which never happens. Then we stood up. I'm trying to get this on camera. Yeah. And you could feel it in the room kind of went- Oh, uh, the- uh, yep. yep, yep. It's so, that, that's so funny. That actually happened to me when I was in Florida and I went audition for a feature film in Orlando and they loved me. Uh -huh. And then and then they told me they're like, yeah, they loved you. 
you did it, you know, perfect. I was like, cool. And they're just like, yeah, you're, I, I'm, I'm five, five, 10, five, 11, depending mm-hmm. on the day, depending on how <laughs> I see, right. But I'm so, and they're like, yeah, you're too short for the girl because she's like your height, but then they put her in heels. Yeah. And I was like, and you know, and you'll see that I'll reference, reference Tom Cruise a lot because like, he's like, he watching Top Gun in the movie theater was mm-hmm. the first movie I saw in the movie theater and it blew me away. And like that, he's what his career is, what has been a big inspiration to me. But, but I remember telling him, I'm like, Tom Cruise isn't that tall. And like, they, they, they shoot around that, like who gives a yeah. shit? And it's like, that right. was my first taste of that. And I'm just like, yeah. Do you want the best actor or do you want the actor with the right height? Like it's insanity, but that's, it is. and it's, it's, you have to detach from that because it's totally. like, you will drive yourself nuts of like, it's not like we're going to the moon and precise math will work out. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, you know, and yeah. I was just like, I'll stand on a fucking Apple box. Like, what are you talking about? Like, seriously, yeah. I'm the best actor and you're not going to yeah. cast me because I'm an inch or two too short. They can't see it. They can't see it. Well, who knows? But Speaking anyway, of, so yeah. Well, I, I was I did a pilot and directed by J.J. Abrams, lovely guy, and um, in between takes, and he and I are talking. And I kind of looked over and I said, "Oh Jesus, J.J., look at that!" And this guy was on his phone, and you know, sitting. And I said, "Jesus, look at that Tom Cruise wannabe extra," and he said. Lisa, it is, it is Tom Cruise. It was, yeah. That's so and, funny. And he said, "Would you like to meet Tom Cruise?" No, oh, no, cool. no thank yeah. you. I don't have <laughs> enough stunt experience. <laughs> You're right. What what pilot was that? Oh well, it never went anywhere. It was for oh, HBO really? called Anatomy of Hope. Oh. Never, yeah, well, didn't go. Anywhere. I know what I've, I've done. Twenty. You know, people are like, "Oh my God, George Clooney did." 13 pilots before er wow yeah i've done 22 pilots yeah <laughs> and i'm i mean that's that's a testament. in my house that's a, that's a testament that you got to that point 20 times right? yeah um, and, and on top of that you were on multiple series as well but oh here's another thing though uh, i did fantastic pilot for Fox. This is years ago when there was only, you know, four networks and um, <laughs> they, they threw money at it and it was really, really good. And Fox loved it. Well, Chris Carter said, and they were going to replace not wow. X-Files, but whatever his next show was. And they were going to put our show on in that spot. And Chris Carter said, huh? Well, you canceled that show. You can kiss my ass goodbye on the X Files, and that it's called leverage right there. <laughs> and uh, exactly, yeah, exactly. So let me ask you this: because pilot, um, pilot is when they shoot a basically an episode to show the network what it would look and feel like, and then they from that they then go, okay, we like it, and we want to then order you know, so many episodes a season. Right. Um, so from your experience, what, what is, for, or from your experience and perspective, what is the difference from, um, from a guest star, a co-star, huh. a, re- a reoccurring, you know, like what, what, what is your perspective on those and how you approach them when you come oh. up, like, not, not, not Maybe how you approach them when you're doing the work, but how do you approach it when you show up on set? Yeah, yeah. Um, Work-wise, it's all the same to me, being on set and doing my job. But feeling about it wise, um, it's very, those are very different categories. Um, For example, extras are often treated just like crap. You know, like meat sex, you know, mm-hmm. so so there's a feeling that one might have being an extra and, and going, yeah, I, this is this is my place. This is my this being a guest star. Fantastic. Love it. 
but you're there for a week, then you're gone. So you don't go in going, Kelsey Grammer is going to be my new best friend. Yeah, it's it's sort of a gun for hire and it's enjoyable. The money's terrific. Being a series regular, oh, the greatest thing in the world. It yeah. is. It's just fantastic. And it's what can I get for you? What do you need? Are you thirsty? Are you hungry? Are you this? Are you that? And your royalty. Royalty. Yeah. And and the gifts and the it's it's a dream. That is nice. a dream. So this just popped in my head uh-huh. because you've you I mean you've done you've done a wider range of things. The one thing that I don't have a lot of personal experience in, like on set experience. Mm-hmm. Um, but I always like, I do the best I can when I'm working with actors on it. Um, but multi-cam sitcom, mm. like how is that different than all the other formats? Yeah. Or, and how do you, and how do you approach it? I, boy, do I love sitcoms, which are a dying breed now, of course, but, um, the hours are fantastic. Fantastic. You know, you go in, this is typical and different shows will be, will do it differently, but you go in Monday, do a table read, have some lunch, go home, show up the next day, do some blocking, there's rewriting, so you get new pages. And as you go through the week, so then typically Thursday is camera blocking. That's when the, the big crew comes in and it's, but, and then Friday, you shoot. Now you're, uh, you're, you're, when you're not, when you're not after the table read and in between like Monday and Thursday, you're working your lines and, and, you know, yeah, you're, and you're again, still working in a sense. Oh, sure. And, yeah. but, um, <clears throat> and again, different shows are so very different that I don't get married to anything necessarily on Tuesday because by Friday, it's, it's a different be, script. <laughs> it can be a totally different. Yeah. So, it, and it's just fun and it's playtime. And I, I have been lucky enough to work with Jimmy Burroughs quite a bit. You young people won't know who he is, but. If, it's what IMDb is for. And you yeah, 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 huge, huge sitcom director and all of uh, Cheers and all. Anyway, and he, he sits there like this. And it goes, that's not funny. Make it funny. <laughs> make okay, it that's make funny. it funny. Yeah. Okay, that that's funny. Move on. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's just, so yeah. it's just playtime. It's it's like and more to your point, I guess, it's doing theater. So, it's doing okay. Theater. So technically, and this this is like how I've approached, and this is what I've kind of figured out, and correct me if I'm wrong. No, Uh, because I was wrong once before. It turned out to be uh, a gas. But um, uh, that's what my grandmother used to say that she'd be like, I don't think I'm wrong, but I I have been wrong once before and it was gas. Um, So I've always I've always used that. Um, Fantastic. uh, So what I've taught my students when looking at because like with the dramatic, like with a single cam or a dramatic, you know, dramatic script. Mm-hmm. like we we can take beats and pauses along the way and just yes. you know you, you know and you sit there and you just go like what are you what are you doing today but with a three multi-cam comedy the punctuation is the beats and so yes. between punctuation to punctuation it's one it's basically one like what are you doing today are you serious like that's it's that is the musical beat notes are the punctuation yes. am i yes. correct Yes, you are. And, absolutely. And, that, and that's how they write to make those jokes land is that yeah. you go da 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 as a writer yourself the writer well, I, ha- I haven't done 
multi-cam comedy writing. Well, so just as a, as a disclaimer, but go ahead. Ed, let me see. Well, first, let me backtrack for a sec. That the way I was trained, that either the cam, you know, the camera may be here, it may be there, it may be you're playing to the Hollywood Bowl, but it's the same acting to mm. me. It's playing to the audience. Is the audience here or are they there? But it's this the same thing. Yeah. Anyway, I was going to ask you about when you say punctuation that so many times the writer is directing you by saying she starts crying, mm. you know, in yeah. and it, it, so the writer knows how they want you to do it, and I I ignore that. I ignore. I, I would well well I would say that's like action or a parenthetical mm -hmm. when I when I say punctuation I mean no no um, I understood what you're saying right but I'm just okay I, so what you know because I, I I've listened to other people other actors writers talk about this um <clears throat> I've thought about this as an actor as a writer and what kind of came to me as you were saying that is is that the writer knows what they want you to do when they're writing it because it's coming from there and that's what feels right then. Mm -hmm. But as we, you and I know, and other people have worked in the industry uh, enough or just as an actor is that what works on page doesn't necessarily work on stage. And right. just like a novel doesn't always transfer to, to screen, right? right. And, and right. vice versa. So, um, so I know we as actors get really stressed when it says he cries and you're like, I gotta cry. Yeah. And like, I love the, talk about Julian Moore. I love the Julian Moore. She, she talked about this and she's like, there's some, she's like, there's some days I can't cry. And she's mm -hmm. like, I'll try my best to, to do what they're asking. She's like, but after a certain period of time, if it's not there, I'll just say she's crying on the inside. <laughs> you know? so what yeah. what what kind of came through me as you were talking was like if i'm the writer and, and and like i'm in this flow and the character i feel the character feeling this way and it's like she laughs or she whatever mm -hmm. like that to me is like whatever i'm going through that day or whatever's coming out of me is coming out on paper but on set when i see it like it that may not feel right because i can't yeah. see i can't see when i'm writing i can't see all the other elements i can't see how this effect actor affects this actor and and everything else and so i'd say you know as 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 a challenge try to fulfill that just to see like you know as it go like can i and if you can great if you can't that's fine too yeah. but like you say is like and i try to tell actors because so many of my students are like they're like i gotta i gotta get off book and i gotta get this and it's like unless it's a soap opera audition <laughs> or, you know, whatever, like getting off book or it's either I say it's a soap opera, it's Aaron Sorkin or it's, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, what's his name? He's from Chicago. Uh, David Mamet. Yeah. He holds. Those are the three times that you need to be word perfect off script type thing. But, yeah. um, and there's See, more playroom with, with soaps, but no, right. And, but you bring up Mamet and the way he writes it, it He's a musician in a certain way because, yes, you do have to be beholden to, to the writing and to the rhythm and the way he writes and the way it reads and the way the actors who can do it well yeah. understand that that's what it is. You know, you're not going to go into a mammoth play and reinterpret it. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're not changing. Like, it's just like you wouldn't change Shakespeare. Exactly. But, right. you know, and, you know, so, yeah. So, but the thing is that with everything else and, you know, and I'm not saying discredit the writer, but I'm just, no. but it's also is like, you know, even with a David Mamet, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm sure there have been times on set where like the actor has said something and he sat there and thought, God, that just doesn't, sound like it i thought it would yeah let's tweak it a bit so yeah you know and i'm sure i'm sure i guarantee you shakespeare changed his adjusted his stuff you know mm -hmm. over performances before it became this 
thing that we you know look at as a document now so yeah. it's you know do the best you can but at the same time and this is what i'm trying to tell people is like what you said is like they're like oh i gotta get off book i'm like if you get this role or if you get the call back or you book it by the time you get to set it's going to be different so yes. like, give yourself a break here and i'm not saying yeah. be lazy i got to be careful with that because a lot of actors just want to be lazy but yeah i'm not saying be lazy but give yourself a break and realize like you not only do you have to you know like i think i said this before but like it's jazz you know and, great, I, yes. and that's why yeah. i think it's important even if you're going to be a, dr a serious dramatic actor improv is so important of yes. understanding how to just go with the flow and everybody's got to do it a director a dp a producer the yes. writer everybody yes. is it's it's constantly it's it's a constantly evolving Correct. organism that's constantly yep. going oh i thought that would work it didn't work our location fell through let's yes. get this location let's write yeah. so it's it's this you know shifting organism that you know by the end of it with all this collaboration will reveal what it really is and by the way sorry i was getting no, up. go ahead i compare very um i'm sure you know this story but and it can be, there can be some very happy accidents. And I'm thinking specifically of a scene in The Godfather where it's uh, Marlon Brando's birthday. And he, you know, the whole family is there and it was this big scene, this blah, blah, blah. Well, Brando said, no, you shot me out. Now you're trying to add this scene? No. I'm done. I'm out. So they had to rejigger this whole scene because he, he wouldn't be there. And yeah. it works beautifully because you feel his presence before he gets there. Mm. And then he arrives outside and the whole family goes and they leave Sunny City. Yeah. Alone. It's no. beautiful. But um, uh, that is a spur of the moment. Huge holy fuck what are we gonna do thing well and, it, I tell, and it turned out beautifully amazingly right. and i tell i tell people that all the time i yeah. call i call them happy accidents because yeah, the accidents yes. but it, it, it only it's only happy in the in the hindsight out. well no yeah. not in the hindsight because it's like you know some of our greatest uh cinematic moments of cinema history have all been accidents you know the yeah. whole i'm i'm walking here with dust yeah, yeah, yeah 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 like a got a taxi driver got pissed off because the street was blocked and he he cut through and yeah. almost hit him and yeah. he like he was still in character and he just did that yeah and and it and they the the cameras kept rolling so like there's been so many happy accidents or like going back to the godfather they talk about is that the the guy who goes in to ask the Don for a favor mm -hmm. and like the, the actor could not get the words out. Yeah. And like, so they ended up shooting him like outside the Don's office, reading cue cards, which is what he was actually doing. Yeah. But they shot it to like show this innocence of him, but it was yeah. because they were like, they were doing take after take and he couldn't get the words out. Yeah. So then they're like, well, what if we shoot this with him actually reading the cue cards to show and and so again, it wasn't on paper when they wrote yeah. it, but in the moment, that's why it's like it's jazz. And it's right. And, and it's do like, you know that I'm sure you did the story of on uh, Indiana Jones? And it's such a great moment where you're laughing because you I know, know what exactly you're talking where about, I'm yeah. going. That you know this huge the way it was written and the way it was uh, going to be filmed, huge fight scene between Harrison Ford and uh, Nomad. This guy. Yeah. Yeah. And on the day, Harrison Ford was so sick, he could barely stand up. So they, they said, you know what? Just pull out a gun and shoot him. Shoot him. And it is such a wonderful moment. Yeah. And happy accident. And sorry that he was sick, but it Rich, worked out. Richard Great. Gere, Richard Gere was messing with Julia Roberts and Pretty Woman when he closed that yes, on her hand. the box, yeah. And he was just like, just messing with her and, yeah. and did, I don't even think he knew the cameras were rolling or I forget what this, but he was just doing it as a goof. And it it's like one of the biggest- It's great. Moments yeah. in cinema history. So, yep. and that's what it's like, 
I see actors and they, they, they just grab like the, if they feel, I call it constipation, creative yes. constipation. And they're holding on to the words and everything. I'm like, I can type anything on my computer, highlight it, right click and sell, say speak. And it will read it out perfectly. Yeah. With no soul to it. Right. Yeah. 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 I hired you or I'm, I'm auditioning you to see what you do with the words, what you bring right. into it. And right. if you deviate this way or that way a little bit, look, you can learn words. Like if I give you enough time, I know you can get off book or whatever. What are you bringing to it? Like, I want to yeah. see, I want to see you come through and what, yes. what makes you special is your, your individual perspective or identity or how you, how you say these words or what, I mean, we love Christopher Walken because he talks oh. like this, yeah. hey, good job. you know, he does yes. that stuff. Yeah. And it's like, if you were to go back prior to his success, you'd go, dude, why don't you talk like normal people? But because he's just leaned into who he is and his quirkiness and his weirdness, yes. he's separated himself from everybody else because yes. he's embraced that. And you can give him a, you give him De Niro and Pacino a script. They all approach it di like the same, the same words differently. Same and, that's right. Why, right. and then you go, well, does this character, is this character more of a Pacino, a De Niro or a walk-in character? Yeah. Like, you yeah. know, how do I want in? But if you wanted them to all do it the same way, it's, it's like, it's insanity. Like in, well, in, film, in film school, there were 10 of us in film school. They handed us all a one page script. You it was shoot the, it. Right. It was yeah, the yeah. same script. Yeah. And they sent us out to shoot it. And we came back with 10 different movies. Yes. No, exactly. You know, and thank goodness that, uh, well, of course, I won't remember. But I think it was Keanu Reeves, maybe Whoa. Winona Ryder. But that, that they were, what's the process? It was it not... So they, they did the acting, but then it was sort of cartooned over. Do you know what I'm talking about? You're Scan talking about Scanner, Scanner, Darkly, Scanner Darkly. Scanner Darkly. And yes. it was, it was. Thank God it, it didn't work. It, it was Keanu Reeves. It was Robert Downey Jr. Yes. And I don't know if, I can't remember why known a writer. I can't remember who no, the third yeah, lead male but, was, but yeah. Scanner but, Darkly. But thank goodness, because it, then computers are going to replace us. You know, and they thank God they can't. Yeah, I right. think that's proof that yeah. they can't. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's a whole different topic, and you yeah. know, teach his own. But it's like, yeah, AI and all that stuff. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know. We could be AI from previous. So to say that, but the whole thing is like, it, even if even you know even if that's true like ai still has a certain perspective of the world that's individual to itself yeah than, than we have and so and that's why i am i i can i cannot sit through a david lynch film mm, really I, I i i love david lynch as a human being i totally respect him and you know he's such a great like from his i read i had it i wrote read his book i've listened to interviews he's such an interesting person it just he's not just like like the mona lisa is boring as shit to me i'm a <laughs> ja I, I, i'm a jackson pollock i'm a M, M, East, mc escher i'm yes. like and so it's we all we all just see things differently and that's why yeah. Thank God, like with the streaming services and everything else, it just opens the door to go to, to everybody to have, you know, and, and people sit there and go, oh, this this show is trash. It's not for you. Right. No. And that's, you know, yeah. And so right. don't right. so don't watch it. Then that's what, for these yes. people over here. Yes. And so everything doesn't have to be Mission Impossible. Everything doesn't have to be Marvel. Everything doesn't have to be these things, you know. Um, so it's like if if you like this, then, you know, Great. do that. No, and, exactly. and, and so anyways, so, uh, let me ask this because you, I mean, you have, you've had, you've had a successful career yeah, and you've had, you, you've also, and I'm sure you talked about this a lot at the time, but you, you were on El the Ellen show, not the one we know now, but Ellen's original sitcom. 
Yeah. And, and you guys did something which I remember because I, growing up in middle America, the whole world stopped. I remember the day it happened. And I remember I didn't even watch it, but I remember everybody being. Lazy. It was a huge deal. Yeah. But yeah. So that in what you played Ellen's girlfriend mm -hmm. and that's when she came out of the closet. And today it's like no big deal. But back then, like that was Huge. like the, the shot heard world around the world. Yes. So let me, I, I want, I wanted to ask you, this is one thing I really want to ask you about that was because actors, you know, artists and everything, and especially the generation that is like, you see a lot of people that when you ask them what they want to be, when they grow up, they say famous, <laughs> what, what is it? what is it from your experience and perspective what was it like to be a working actor with some success but then overnight this big spotlight was put not you know put on you but it wasn't just even about your talent it was about this topic and all yeah. that was going on so how what what was that experience like and how did you navigate that well okay great question um First of all, and this is something we talked about last mm -hmm. week, that um, I remember the callback to read with her was on, I think, Labor Day weekend. And I was so, uh, asshole, so put out, like, really? You're ruining this, my weekend. <laughs> it's a holiday and you want me to come in? And I was just, oh, God, okay, whatever. I had no idea what it was going to be at all and um then as, as Wait, i'm sorry i'm sorry were you already on the show no 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 i'm talking about my audition so because i was you, only on the last get, season i was so only you got, on the you last got season. Ca you got cast specifically for this coming out yes oh yeah. wow okay yeah and um Oh gosh, I can go on about that. First of all, Ellen is so lovely. She's wonderful nice. and a lot more fragile. I don't know what she's like now. I haven't talked to her in a long time, but yeah. a lot more fragile than you might think. You know, mm -hmm. she seemed anyway. As, as most people are, right? Uh, yeah, well, yes. yeah. And, um, but so I remember- Labor Day, yeah. Yeah, so I get the part and I'm like, oh, fine, whatever. And then they kept bringing me back and it was wonderful. And then, you know, obviously it turned into, like you said, such a, a big thing. And it was so fantastic to be a part of this. And, and I'll tell you about a fan letter that I got that was amazing. But um, Entertainment Tonight interviewed me and said, you know, how do you feel about the disclaimers? Because we would just like touch hands and parental advisory, you know, because that was just uh, women touching, gross. Um, and I said, oh, my God, I, I'm so behind Ellen on this. And I think that whole thing is ridiculous. But the president of ABC called me directly and said, do you like your job? I said, I love my job. And he said, then shut up. Let Ellen fight that fight you shot oh, wow. yeah which is fascinating to me um but this spam letter i got it was so beautiful from this woman in colorado and uh she said i'm writing to you to apologize i'm i'm gay and when i read in people magazine that you were straight i got very very angry she said but what i realized was I was judging you on your sexuality, uh, just like I have been judged on mine. And I, I am so sorry. That's such and a that changed, great it, point. It changed her life. It changed, I mean, a stupid sitcom changed my yeah. life, changed her perspective in a huge way. And it, well, it, it, goes, became, it, it became a very meaningful thing. It goes to show how important what we do is. And, and exactly. I, talked about this, I talked about this last week about like, we yeah. joke about like, guys, calm down we're not curing cancer here but right. in a but in yeah. a way with comedy we are and yeah and we are bringing awareness and we need to i don't know just acknowledge that it's not like we have to take it too seriously or or i love alan watts like don't take it seriously but be sincere 
Oh, um, lovely. Yes. But yeah, I mean, I had a, I had an experience like that. That's I've never, nobody said it to me like that before, but I directed, I wrote and directed a short film about a gay boxer in the seventies who was his, his, his estranged best friend uh, was threatening to out him mm. during, during a title fight if he didn't throw it. And I, it got into a couple of film festivals and it got in one at Rhode Island which is a big, big film festival. And uh, anyways, like I was, I was like a, a lot of the, the LGBTQ community, they didn't like attack me or, or mm. anything, but like they didn't people like even friends that I thought that like would support it didn't. Interesting. And, and it was just an interesting experience. And I, there was, I was doing a round table with other lgbtq directors mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. were they they were all lgbtq i was the only one not and i asked them about this they're like hey man from they all said they all sympathize they're like from my experience like they were like if you know i'm, be, I'm like one i remember one said i'm a gay director and mm -hmm. i've been criticized by the community because you know for for whatever reasons and it's I don't know so, and and it like made me feel better because I was like I I hope I'm not doing damage and I was like am I being criticized because I'm a straight guy telling a gay story like I yeah wanted, yeah I just want to tell a, a good a, it was an interesting story to me yeah but um but that's interesting because I with our the cancel culture and everything that's going on right now it's like you see people that are like we need to cancel this person for bullying this person and it's like but don't you see by doing this whole cancel thing you're actually bullying bullying that person, the right. bully you know yeah and it's yes. like and i took and i took but i i get it on both sides of it and uh it's it's interesting that's a whole other topic it's interesting because it's i get both sides of that pin the pendulum swinging so far both ways but well so, you know oh i'm sorry i just no, no, want to say ahead. something too as as an actor you know they i did a lot of press at the time and the first question always was so Lisa, are you gay? And at first I was like, yeah, no, no, I'm not. Blah, blah, blah. But then I started to really resent that because my character, no, I'm not gay, but I'm also not a mother or real estate agent. I'm an <laughs> actor. Right. Yeah. yeah I'm I've, like a character. I've and thought like, of, I've, yeah, go ahead. How was it kissing Ellen? And I'm like, first of all, if you're asking, was it weird? I kissed Rob Schneider, so please, you know, <laughs> kissing Ellen was heaven. Don't well, to, it, <laughs> to me, my like again, I haven't, I haven't been in that position yet, but like I, I, be, I'm always mentally preparing myself for, and that's why I'm asking this question about that, like that that bump in awareness of who you are in the public light. Mm. It's, I, because like <laughs> I, I, I study that because I see a lot of people get crushed underneath it. And it's like, yeah. to me, my response is like, when people, you know, whatever it is, if you're like, what's it like kissing so-and-so? I'm like, what's it like kissing your, your, your wife? Like, I'll turn it right back around. Oh, you want to get, oh, oh, you think you can ask me personal questions? Well, let me ask you some, are you wearing underwear? Like to me, it's like, <laughs> yeah, if, yeah, if, yeah. If, so, but anyways, I digress. What I want to ask you, cause I got to wrap up here sure. is talk about because I think this is an important thing that you just kind of stumbled across because they don't prepare you for this in drama school or acting school mm -hmm. of, of like you, like you said of like the president of ABC was like, you want to keep your job. It's like the, the, the whole media, the press, the business side of it. Yeah. Right. Of like, let Ellen fight her own fight. The human side of you is like, well, I'm just, I'm trying to do a good thing. But yeah. then there's this, there's this, there's the business side of it. Yes, yes. And yes. so what's it like being an artist having to then step into a position of being the, a biz, like the business for the P, the PR person, like having to, uh, the, it's really, it's being a politician. It is. And, you know, and so what's that? I'm not and, playing, and, you know, and, and what advice, enough. sorry. And what advice would you give? Well, you know, I, I, 
am going to give the advice not from my own perspective because it's I get to wear whatever I want when I walk out the door without being splayed all over the magazine for look how fat she got you know yeah. no one cares about me that way but I'll take it from someone like Tom Hanks um, you don't ever hear anything bad about him and that is quite I believe. And I believe he's probably a, is a wonderful person, but that's also quite engineered, you know, and um, that he's, he's also got the resources to put the people around him to like Denzel Washington talk about that. He goes, I pay people to keep me out of the, the tab. Yes, and stuff. No, exactly. But, but, for, exactly. But, for, but for somebody that experience like what you, you experienced and, and not to say that you're not as valuable as Didzel or Tom Hanks, yeah. but, but it is a different level of exposure. Yeah. But like we started this journey as actors and like, I want to play this role. And then it turns into this business to where you're like, I'm just an actor playing this role. And then all of a sudden people are like, are you gay? And putting a microphone in your face. Yeah. What, like, what is it like you I don't know from from the way I see it, and that's why I kind of want you, I, I want your perspective. You got to you, you turn off the artist. Yeah. And then and you're no longer the actor. You're no you're now like the spokesperson for the project or right. the series or whatever. So what? How did you deal with that in the sense, like personally, like how did you like your mindset and stuff deal with that and go look? I you know, and I know you said like you got irritated with the question, like that time period. How did you navigate that fallout, if you will, and or the repercussions of that in working through that? Because, of course, the studio wasn't like, we're going to send people down to help you work through this and coach you. They're like, just keep right. your mouth shut. Like, what is it like? Because you, you step into it with I, this ideology, this childlike, oh, they asked me a question, I'm going to answer it, not seeing yeah. the big picture, the politician thing of it. So. I don't think I have a good answer for you. And I say that because I was lucky enough to have a, a pretty large body of work under my belt by that time. Now, had that been my first job, I'd have a different answer for you yeah. because it would have all been overwhelming, I imagine, and, and daunting and um, frightening perhaps. But at that time, I, I craved it. I love, I really? love, yes, sure. I don't, and I have no interest in being hugely famous, but yeah, I love talking with you. I love talking about acting. I love talking about the projects. Ask, you know, you of course, but anybody ask me anything. I love talking about it. Yeah. It's not, it's not a chore. And I think when you become a product, that's a whole, and I'm no product. That's a whole different ball game that I have no idea how to navigate. I don't know. You got, you got a taste of it though. <laughs> well, you know, let me say this real quick that I did, ironically, I killed Taylor Swift on CSI. I know, which was fun. And lovely lovely at the time I don't know what she's like now lovely girl and we in the same month I was in the Hannah Montana movie Miley wow. Cyrus not so much so watching these two navigate that Yo, and yeah, boy, fair was a class act and you know what I do think Miley's quite talented but I would never want to be around her mm -mm, no thank you and her father, and, uh, yeah, uh, real quick, I'll tell you this, the director of the film, this lovely British guy. And I'm standing next to Billy Ray Cyrus, who was supposed to be my boyfriend, who had no time for me. And the so director- like, like a real boyfriend then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and so the director came up and he goes, um, Lisa, darling, why don't you uh, tell Billy Ray how many times have we worked together? And I said, oh God, Peter, I don't know. And he goes, not enough. That's how many times. Now all of a sudden, Billy Ray is like, ooh, hello. Right. Yeah. You know what, fuck off, dick. <laughs> no, no, I got no time yeah. for you. You know, so just be, and be, be mindful. Cause here I am and you, again, who am I? But talking trash about Miley yeah. Cyrus. 
Who knows what she was going through? Well, you're being generous. Oh, I thought yeah. that's where you, I thought that's where you're going with that. No, um, fair enough. No, I, I do want I. I did want to share this with you because you were talking about earlier, we were talking about earlier how uh, like we get to work with people and like these, these cool things um, and not, not know, like not you go in and not know what's, what's going to happen. I went yeah. to, I like, Oh, it was the Ellen thing where you're like, they called you up on labor day. You're like, ah, oh. which re reminded me last week when you're like, when, when you're an actor, you're like, I just want to get an audition and you get an audition. You're like, oh, yeah, I just want to call back. You get a call. Yeah. back. You're like, I want to book it. And then, yeah. and then you book it and you're like, oh, it's on Labor Day. Really? Yeah. You know? yeah, I know. I know. But, I know. So I, know. I went, I went to, I went to a casting call for a commercial and they're, uh -huh. it's, it's for people who ride motorcycles and they're like, bring your motorcycle and da, 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 da. And I'm like, okay. And like, I was at a, I was at this, uh, a time when I was just, I was kind of over the business. Yeah. <laughs> And which it happens quite often. It's like, it's this ebb and flow, but I was just over the business and I was just over being devalued and, and, yeah. and, and like, you know, the, the, the more I've been in the business, our industry has gone from SAG projects to these, all these multi-million and billion dollar corporations being able to do non-union. Yeah. Pay, uh, you know, that's, which is a whole other topic. So yeah. I go to this and I go in, you know, and I, I bar, I, I grab my bike and I take it to the audition and, you know, gear and everything, everybody else is there in gear. And it's this hot little office mm. in West, Ho I think it's West Hollywood. Yeah. It's West Hollywood. And, you know, and the woman's and they're bringing people in in groups of five and the group goes in, they're <laughs> in there for like 25 minutes before yeah. they come out. And, yeah. and it's like, and I think I had to go to work and like, um and everybody's sweating because it was a hot you know day and everything yeah and not just i'm like i'm i remember going i'm fucking i'm done i'm done with yeah. this non-union bullshit <laughs> da, 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 working with people who are not professional i just i was just having a bad day like yeah it, it really wasn't you know it was whatever so i go in and they finally call me in and i'm like one of the lat the last groups so i've been sitting there watch i go in and I'm just, you know, I'm just not in a good mood. And I walk yeah. in and, and it's this, it's a good size room, but it's all dark. The, the, the overhead lights are turned off and there's uh -huh. just, there's just like some, some like, you know, uh, not even five K's, but like some soft lights, like towards the, as you walk in, they're like hitting you because the walls are right here. Yeah. And you're like, and so you can't see anybody past those lights. And they're like, yeah. just go in, they're like, go in, line up and they're going to tell you what to do shoulder to shoulder mm -hmm. we go in and i'm like if i remember i was like the in the middle uh -huh. of the group and we go in i'm like whatever and i turn and i was just like because i think i remember thinking like this is it like a student student film type you know level of production and i go in and we turn and i stand there and all of a sudden out of the darkness comes this hand right Ooh. at me and i'm like what the <laughs> <laughs> and, and I reach out and I, and I grab the hand. And as I look up is, is Ewan McGregor. <gasps> and it's, oh, so it's Obi-Wan Kenobi with this yes. big grin. And he's like, Hey, I'm Ewan. And awesome. I was just like, I'm Brent. And then he goes down the line of people and he, and, it, and he was the director of this Indian, it was Indian or whatever Indian. motorcycle. And um, and I got the job <laughs> and I got in, he, like, he directed this commercial. He was the nicest, most appreciative. He's like, thanks. Thanks. Thank you so much for coming in. I was joking with like, I'd crack some jokes and like, he was so in director mode and I'd crack a joke and he'd look at me like I was serious. And then, and I'd start smiling. He'd start laughing and I'd like, great. But we had such a great time together. And he, right. and, but it was this weird thing of Obi Wan Kenobi coming yeah, out of the darkness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Fantastic. And, uh, and it was just such is one of my favorite Hollywood memories because it's like I went in there with that mindset of like these amateurs, and it turned out to be this big production. Yeah. And like it was just I was just in a bad mood, but then to have I never expected somebody at his level or anything to come out and everything, and it's just like that's that's what I love, love about our industry, you know, and things like that. And I just had a student work with him on, um, 
on Obi-Wan Kenobi, he played a stormtrooper and he, he was posting some videos and he talked about, you know, him working with him and same thing. He was just like, he was so nice. He's actually, he was scared of us because we were in stormtrooper outfits and it, (laughs) and, but it was, it was such, it was such a treat. And so fun. And it's like those days, definitely like, and working with Al Pacino, those days definitely outweigh all the bad, but they're, they're so spread out, you know, that you, you lose sight, but it's like the reason I started doing this. But you know, and, and I was thinking about this, we didn't say it, but in thinking about our our talk and from last week that it's to me, it's always more interesting to say yes than no. What's it going to cost? What's yeah. it going to cost you? Unless it's, it's nudity or a knife well, in the throat or something. <laughs> but it, but, yeah. but I am specifically thinking of here I am at some commercial audition and this beautiful woman comes up to me and says, you would be perfect for this thing my boyfriend is doing. And I'm like, I don't fucking know you. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know him. Who's I don't your know boyfriend? Who is who's this? Yeah. What am I getting? And I said, sure. And here we are. You know, and I've had so Oh, you're talking about Joanna. Yes. Oh and I've had so much fun with you and 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 with our work and because I said yes. Yeah. And I could very easily have said uh no thanks or whatever. And not you know that's a good point. What's it gonna cost you? Yeah. You know, to just say yes. And 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 afterwards you and afterwards you can and you know, if it doesn't turn out and like things start going south, you can say, you know what, I appreciate it. And, but I'm going to step away and, you know, yeah, exactly. Joanna said, Lisa was so sweet and kind when she came over to introduce myself. Love you. (laughs) Oh, when I came over to introduce myself, um, she, she's, she's on the line listening. Um, (laughs) no, it's, I I've been very, I'm so grateful that I didn't realize I couldn't, I, it's not that I forgot that that's how that happened, but yeah. I'm so, I'm so grateful you did because yeah, we work together on assisted Couple living and yeah. I'm always thinking about you when I'm writing stuff and want to, you know, work with you and in the, uh, some Anytime. more and, and have lunch. And so, yeah. I, it's been, it's been a blessing to have you in my life as well. And uh, thanks for saying yes <laughs> uh, back then. And even now, so. Yeah. And I appreciate I appreciate your time. We that was two hours. It felt like oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank but you. But I lo- I loved it. I, I think so we much. carried a lot of great stuff, and you shared so many great stories. And I know there's more, so we'll have to do it again. There's in the more anytime, yeah. anytime. So, well, I appreciate you, and thanks for hanging out with us uh, today. And, and hopefully, we'll see each other in person soon. Yeah, let's. I'll I'll, uh, I'll call you up and or text That's you, and we'll schedule something. You have, have your people call my people. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. My people. You're looking yeah. at my people. <laughs> right. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Unless it's Joanna. So. Uh, right. Well, All thank right. you thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank I, you. It was great. Take care. It was. I'll see y'all soon. I hope. <laughs> yes, ma'am. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye.